this is my boss, Alec Rosenberg from Sony Computer Entertainment, the Sony PlayStation Group. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah. I have a tendency not to have a strong voice. Um, now, uh, basically, back in September, um, I started experimenting with retargeting Clang, basically swapping out the parser dtrace and plugging in Clang uh, for the purpose of having Clang uh, support uh, C++ um, and another advantages of Clang, which I'll, I'll mention briefly shortly. Um, now, the way I did this was basically just to go into to libdtrace, you know, find out where the parsing happens, and basically swap in mine, and then, in, just like in the, uh, in the, the, the parser in dtrace, it, it, it calls uh, libdtrace functions uh, for the semantic actions. I basically just call those same functions to use uh, the libdtrace's um, code generation. So it's really not, not, a, not a major task. The main thing is to get into to Clang and to find out where you can put in your parsing for the, the Clang stuff. Uh, basically what, what I've done, uh, I've only worked on this for, for less than a month actually. Back in September, I got pulled off to some other higher priority things, but I hope to get back to it soon. But basically what I thought I'd do, because it's kind of a new thing, just kind of do a vertical slice where I, where I take it all the way from the Clang down to um, the actual D-Trace stuff. Uh, oh, I should also mention that I'm, I'm using a, um, a version of D-Trace that we have ported for the PlayStation uh, Vita platform. Mm -hmm. That's the PlayStation Portable 2, as I call it. Um, now, um, Alex here, my boss, he's the one who actually is responsible for, for getting Sony to uh, not only start using Clang, but also D-Trace. So uh, it was a great foresight and um, So look for good things to come from Sony. Okay, so you know why use Clang? Well, of course, the, the main thing is we get some can put in some C++ stuff, and Clang also has somewhat friendly error messages, and uh, it, it also has stuff I'm I'm not using, but uh, future products could could take advantage of the the uh, the hooks they have in there for syntax highlighting and, and completion stuff. Clang is very modular. It's a very modern architecture, and it's open source. Did you want to add anything to that, Alex? Um, I think the thing is for people who, well, you all you all have Macs, so you all probably have Clang installed. Um, so if you're not familiar with it, it's effectively the next generation open source compiler that everyone's using um, outside of the Linux community. If that if that gives you a quantified uh, uh, quantity for it. Uh, now, uh, basically, uh, you know, this, like I said, is very experimental. I'm not really a compiler guy. I'm not a detraced guy. I don't know much about either. <laughs> so this is really kind of really fun way to just dig into an exciting project. Um, so the first thing I did in my vertical slice experiment was was basically just start with a probe definition, and um, I basically gotten as far as that it, just a simple, uh, not not the full probe de uh, definition, but the basic um, first part of the probe definition, I've got it so that it generates the code and the bytecode and it'll actually run. To make my life easier, um, I, I added a, an option to, to the dtrace front end to um, let me uh, uh, just have it spit out the, uh, the, the assembly code without actually connecting to the platform. Um, since like the, the, the beta would be an embedded system, so you just kind of avoid that hassle. Um, so the first thing you might uh, think of when uh, trying to mix uh, C++ and, and, D, and the D language together is, well, you know, namespace, colon, colon, you know, that looks kind of like a probe definition. So basically the, the trick part is to, to figure out how to um, kind of deal with these ambiguities. Uh, for this particular case, uh, one way I came up to, to handle one way I came up with the handle it is to, to use some delimiters like uh, uh, open, close brackets, or maybe even uh, the uh, vertical bar pipe symbol. Um, uh, there's issue of, of how overloads are handled, overloaded functions, you know, where you have the same name and different argument sets. Well, basically, you have the probe, the, the, the function part in the probe specification, um, have it be able to take, you know, full function 
uh, declaration, or maybe not a full declaration, but at least the types. And something that can help there um, is uh, uh, use of wild cards. Now wild cards, uh, that's a little tricky part too, but the way I, way I handled them was to, to handle them syntactically, that is, they're actually kind of tokens, and then I can construct this, the, the string, and the, I basically, I'm sending this down to the, uh, to the dtrace um, as a string, so, so basically all I have to do is, is find the Mangle name for the function and send it down. And you know, things I can do like if, maybe if I don't specify sufficient for overloads, it could send down multiple um, function names. Uh, those are things kind of need to work out. And uh, the rest is basically figure out how to kind of shoehorn uh, some of the, the D language uh, stuff in there, the parsing stuff, and I'm sure there'll be other problems I have to resolve. Um, so one thing you guys can help out, I'm, I'm not sure what's the appropriate forum for this, but if you want to be involved, you want to have your input, I'm, I'm hoping we can set up something where we can have discussions about it. Like if you want to talk about you know, what would be the best way to kind of deal with the operator overloading and, and other ideas you might have, you, you might want to see in Clang. Um, I'm going to try to find out how to make myself available so we can have that discussion you know, in a public forum. And that's pretty much all I have to say unless you have questions. Is this open source in the work that you've done? I mean, is this, is this yeah. Okay. Yeah. My group is mostly open source. And so, where do people go to, to get it? Because I mean, it seems to me that this dovetails well with the previous the right. conversation before lunch about experimenting with new ideas, and this might be a quick way to go experiment with some ideas. Right. Are, are you? One question I had is, are you? How are you communicating with libtrace? Are you just using the the libtrace API, or are you generating diff yourself? Um, <laughs> I use the uh, function calls actually. You know, just as the uh, you know the yak stuff in in the Btrace front end, it has the semantic actions. I basically do those same type of things, except I do it while I'm walking the abstract syntax tree. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So your you libtrace still generates the diff. Yes. Uh -huh. It does the code generation, but then you you literally have them just what you described of, of plugging in your parser. Okay. Mm -hmm. And one nice thing would be to actually kind of productize that in libdtrace. Like I, I use, you know, those functions are kind of internal. If we could kind of bring that up and expose it, and also being able to swap in, that, that, that'd be uh, useful too for if somebody decided to put in some other string language in there. We don't, we don't have the people here who can generate it now. Like, what is it, the generate, this is not really a question for you, but the people who play with the generated doc, what do you know, do they, Generated by hand? Do they call like? It is generated by hand. So he actually, yeah, he created a remarkable kind of reverse engineering and that literally just it generates off completely outside of the vitro. Mm -hmm. Before the, the Java SDT stuff did the same thing. Yeah. Right. We, we we have a, a a visualizer that is basically recorded ioctals of what they want to have happen. So they I don't think they they dug down to the, dealing with what the DOF is, but they have it stashed uh, of what they want to use, and then maybe they patch it. Who knows? It would be interesting, if, to your point, if you could decompose DOF and diff generation to a slightly lower level, and then that could be leveraged both by the Batman and DOF people and people who want to experiment with different parsers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is open source. Is it available for download somewhere? No Not at this time. Um, uh, I, I've been working with a, a tool that's used with the, uh, the Vita platform, and you know, this is all very expandable. I, I don't even know much about it myself. Um, but I'm sure in the future we'll, we'll find some way to, to get it out there. Like, like hopefully even um, I can have my changes kind of put into the main claim trunk if they're willing. Um, uh, for everyone's worth, just like a GitHub repo that has yeah. got your kind of stuff in it would allow right. people to start. Because I, I G my Git part, is I, kind of foreign for most of the people in our company. Right. Um, yeah. You know, we're, we're just teaching them about subversion because Perforce is the one true way for them. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so I, I agree. GitHub repo is the way to do this uh, because it, those changes can be staged on top of the baseline clang. Uh, there isn't really, to my knowledge, a GitHub repo for Dtrace. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, you just need the Lumos repo. I mean, it's effectively the, right. the, the repo for. But it, I mean, it doesn't just need to necessarily be GitHub. I mean, it's a public. Uh, that would be my choice if it if it were me day to day. I mean, John has to 
get used to GitHub, or Git if he wants to do that. So. Right, I mean, there are also bridges if you, if Mercury or whatever, I mean, however you want to do it. I, my point being that it'd be great to just get the source code out there where people could actually start sure. making pull requests or, uh, like I said, I think, I think it, it dovetails very well into the conversation before lunch about trying out new ideas. And this is a great way to try out right. new ideas. And, and that's, that's the idea here, is just to try something. Uh, you know, we have a lot of customers who are C++ and, you know, D as it stands is, is way too difficult for C++ users. So that the idea here was to try to make that simpler. <clears throat> and so how much is working at this point? I mean, you, you, you're only a month into it, so I mean, you've gotten yeah. to a point where you've got something that's that. I, I basically have it so uh, some simple versions of probes will will go compile, <coughs> and, and I have the special option that will just print out the uh, the uh, the diff, I guess you call it. Right. Do you have an example of that? I mean, is it good? Um, to, uh, sorry. Oh, that. I have a printout, but I don't have anything electronic. Pass it around. <laughs> and if you don't mind me putting a plug, uh, we need to hire a D-Trace engineer, and we also need a Clang engineer. Yeah. Yeah. And they need to be friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they need to be. Question is, you've been talking about like um, being able to specify a probe that fires like when a C function, a C plus plus function is entered, right? Do you do anything with the type information? Um, like we talked about uh, you know, the CTF information and then some, somehow like being able to, to take C++ stuff and then uh, mash it into something that, that CTF could understand. We, we don't have CTF on our platform at all. Uh, basically, that was too much for us to do at that point. Um, we're also missing tons of basics. We don't have FBT, for example. Um, so, uh, what provider do you have? Good question. Uh, we have the uh, all the timing stuff. We have proc and sketch and syscall. Um, USDT is the, the fanciest we've got. Uh, we have quite a few SDT ones, a few custom ones. We have an interrupt provider that lets us hook any of the, the software-definable interrupt stuff in, in our hardware. Um, in particular, there's a vblank one, which is pretty pretty commonly used with game developers. Um, yeah, a whole bunch of other SDT things. Uh, there's a guy in Japan right now doing some power probes, um, so you can you know keep track of when things go on and off in the various drivers. What's the what's the architecture? What's the ISO? ARM. Oh. It's Cor Cortex A9 quad core. I wonder if anyone else is building an ARM port. <laughs> uh, yeah, we got code somewhere. It was NEC had done some work. I don't think we ended up using that. I think we used more of the Apple tree. Uh, than anything else, because it, it was more familiar with what changes we needed to look at. You, you just answered a little bit of this question, but uh, can you talk a little bit about your motivation for like, what? Why do we need D uh, in this? Is it is it coming from a you want to be able to? audit code that's been given to you to run on this platform, or is it out of a particular pain point that you want to make go away, or yes. is it performance? <coughs> we, we want to do all the stuff D-Trace lets us do. Oh, nice. So in, in practice, you know, the, almost all the shipping, PlayStation Vita games, it shipped in December uh, in Japan and, and February in the US and Europe. Almost all those shipping games, a certain amount of auditing of them was done by the format QA engineers in Japan, debugging of the system under test was done. Um, you know, the individual game developers have access to a dtrace.exe that runs on Windows and remotely connects to the target. Um, wow. You know, so they uh, they can do, you know, all the providers we mentioned. Internal users in, in the kernel team and whatnot have access to a larger list of providers. Like, the syscall list is limited, um, you know, for security reasons, to only ones who want you to be able to trace. Things like that. You know, Apple went through the same things in, in, in their port. Um, we, we've gone through the same set of decisions. So can I ask you a question? So the, the, um, one of the things that this seems to get you, just looking at the output, which is great, thank you for, no, thank you for uh, keep asking this around, but the, um, one of the things that I, uh, it seems that you may be able to identify mangled symbols, or through their, their in their C++ fashion, be able to identify a probe. Um, yeah. I, is that, I assume the, the, you're using Clang, the target is using Clang as well, and you can rely on Name mangling, being using a name mangling standardized. 
Is that, is that completely true? Yeah. For the most part, yeah. There's a mailing list where the GCC developers and the client developers and Edison Design Group and a couple other compiler vendors all communicate about this stuff. When is that settled? I, 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 <laughs> so if you look at C++11, there are bugs in it, basically. Okay. And they, they have to discover those one at a time as one of the various compiler teams implements something, notices a strange edge case that the other teams didn't obviously already settle on a solution for. And so that gets discussed from time to time on, the, on that list. So there, there are really only a couple ABIs. There's the so-called Itanium ABI, which specifies mangling. And then there's, you know, like Microsoft or, you know, other special vendors that don't want to behave. But the world and the compilers have settled on, on name maker. I mean, that's, that's, that's yeah. right here. Cause I mean, that's the, a, the whole C++ plus plus ABI. Plus. Okay. The whole thing. Yeah. So just a note about that, that handout I, I put in just, the, this was from actual test case codes, code that I put in. Uh, the first couple pages have the, uh, the D language and then the rest um, has the, uh, the diff output. So I haven't had a chance to look at this yet, but how do you handle templates? I mean, in, in my experience, the average, um, you know, fully typed C++ function prototype consists of about 95% templates. Is, um, is it wild part of that? Is it, does it capture all templates? Can I put the templates in there? You know, what, what's the intent? Well, I, I guess I'm relying that uh, the template has uh, an actual code imp implementation somewhere. So basically, all I'm passing down to lift dtrace is the the mangled name, which is the actual in representation of the instantiation. Right. So, that so, you, so if, if I'm interested in tracing, I, I, in other words, I have to specify something where the templates are fully defined such that I can start the mangled name. I have to say I want all templated versions of this method, of this function. Well, actually, um, I need to kind of research that, but uh, I'm I'm hoping like you can use the wild cards like say for a template param parameter, and then that will match like all templates that have that particular parameter or, or wildcard that parameter, if you know what I mean. Right. You know, it's gonna be kind of, you know, how would that work? Sorry, I, 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 to be educated, I, I, how, how would that work exactly in terms of, I mean, <coughs> wildcard and templates? I mean, that's, that's very enticing. Right, so I mean, the, the, at least in the Itanium mangling scheme, it's basically a, a left-right single pass operation. So when you hit a wild card, you can stick a wild card in, it's gonna match. Huh. Just happens so to work out. I, I can't say the same necessarily about Microsoft's mangling scheme or, or you know, any other uh, mangling schemes that might exist, but you know, the Itanium one is most platforms people in this room would care about. Probably the nasty part for users is that they would have to type in enough of a template you know, that I could mangle it correctly. Uh, um, I think in, in most cases, the wild card will go in the right place. And how much of the kind of the, the you know, you're, you're trying to make it easier for developers, folks in QA to use DTrace because they're, they're dealing with the C++ system. How much of it is probe specification versus probe actions and wanting, this, wanting to do more or make things in probe it's, actions? It's all data structures, right? I mean, re the, the, one of the features of D is you can include any .h file and it will parse because the whole C type system is there. Right. Right, so we want to bring in the entire C++ type system. Because you know who knows what your your headers and data structures and things have in them, right? It just kills me, but this feels like the most plausible way to instrument C plus plus in a way that's meaningful for the developer. Yeah, well, that's, that's the hope. Yeah, <laughs> Steve. So, have you thought about going a little deeper than just the parser? Presumably, you could compile not to this the D trace semantic routine, but to LVM to B format. Yeah, and you could. For me personally, that would be a pretty thing, pretty big chunk to bite off. I, yeah, yeah. I think it's probably better start up with the high level. Yeah, there's there's a talk at, at, that um, this guy Anton Korbenikov has done at the LVM conference about building a back end in 24 crazy Russian hacker hours, yeah. and uh, you know it was for the MSP 430, so it's a small micro. Um, you could probably do it, you know, but it would not be the results you're looking for. But you would be able to run the optimizer, you know. You don't have any loops, you know, you don't, you know, there's a lot of things it's not going to help you with. So you get a little bit of common self-expression elimination where legal, basically. That's about it, you know. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure there's a huge advantage for the amount of work that that, that would take. Oh, a couple other things I just remember, like uh, with Clang, the, the preprocessor is kind of embedded in Clang, so you kind of get the preprocessor for free. And also, um, you know, I'll have you know, escapes like, you know, extern C++, maybe even extern D, 
if you really want to demarcate, uh, uh, mark things as you know specific to, to just D or C++ in case there's problems, stuff like that. Any other questions? Great work. That's yeah. great. Thank you. I'd love to get a learner's as soon as you. I know, I know the, the organizational yeah. world in which you live, so. Uh, it's actually just, it's more day-to-day convenience than organizational. Oh, great. That's great. The work is open source, so. Mm -hmm. That's great.